Hello, hello, this is Dr. Jason Lee. This lecture will focus on mainly the hematologic malignancies. So, let's start off with CLL. Chronic lymphocytic leukemia is a B-cell lymphoproliferative malignancy. It's the most common type of leukemia in European and North American older adults. It occurs about 3.5 per 100,000 per year. There are population variations in the prevalence of the disease. So men are affected a little bit more, 5 per 100,000 per year, whereas women is 2.5 per 100,000 per year. White versus black Americans are more affected at a ratio of 3.9 versus 2.8 per 100,000 per year, and Asians have the least of this with 0 0.8 per 100,000 per year. This is irrespective of the time spent living in North America. The incidence is low until the age of 50, and then the rate increases. The median age at diagnosis is 70 for men and 74 for women. So how common are immune deficiencies in CLL? Well, when we look at the cause of mortality or death, it's about 25 to 50 percent of patients. The cause of death is actually an infection. Only 15 percent of patients with CLL have completely normal antibodies. The immune suppression may be because of complications caused by the disease itself, but may also be as a result of treatments such as chemotherapy. A relevant example of this is rituximab, which is a common component of prescribed treatments for CLL. Rituximab is a monoclonal anti-CD20 antibody. It's a protein marker that's present on the surface of B cells. So it treats and kills malfunctioning B cells like CLL. Unfortunately, there's no way to really differentiate between a malfunctioning B cell by the CD20 marker. So you, what you'll end up is both malignant cells and normal B cells being destroyed by anti-CD20 therapy. This is what leads to the humoral immune deficiency in some patients. The other drugs used to commonly treat CLL include fludarabine, which impairs both T cell and B cell function for a few years, and as well as steroids, uh, which we you know can suppress uh, globally the immune system. The types of immune deficiencies that CLL patients get is hypogammaglobinemia in about 85% of cases, and combined defects in, in uh, the minority. Neutropenia is also seen, which can also be a side effect of therapy. Late-stage CLL can sometimes present with multiple cell lineage defects. Progression of the disease can also lead to humoral immune deficiency. The peripheral lymphoid organs are the principal sites of CLL proliferation. Within these organs, the CLL cells form pseudofollicles, which are sites of CLL proliferation. This captures the normal T cell helper function for their own use, denying it to the normal B cells in the process. This effect leads to A, increase in the proliferation rate, B, induction of cell cycle arrest, C, induced resistance to apoptosis. Another possible mechanism for immunoglobulin production defects is the destruction of normal B cells and plasma cells by cells that express a fast fast ligand. The effect of CLL on T cells is to induce a relative state of energy. The mechanism is still a point of discussion, but CLL cells do express a wide variety of cytokines, including IL-6. IL-6 is possibly responsible for these effects. IL-6 is a pleiotropic cytokine with effects on the systemic inflammatory response, B cell differentiation, and T cell differentiation. CLL cells are a major source of IL-6, and the presence of high concentrations of IL-6 uh, in a solution of stimulated T cells results in a reduction of T cell activation and proliferation and at the same time it induces Th2 polarization. IL-10 is also produced by CLL cells. This is linked to expression of CD5, which is a surface marker on all CLL cells. Side effects of many treatments we discussed, such as rituximab and fludarabine, have significant effects on the immune system, occasionally more so than the actual disease itself. This can persist up to several years, according to some case report series studies. Other drugs, such as steroids and alatizumab, which can target mature lymphocytes, can cause immune suppression as well. Alatizumab is similar to rituximab. It targets CD52 protein on the surface of mature lymphocytes. That's how it differs. So, how do we treat immune deficiencies in CLL? Well, if it's a humoral immune deficiency, we replace the humoral immune side with IVIG or subcutaneous immunoglobulin. Now the other uh, hematologic malignancy I've talked about is multiple myeloma. The tricky part 
about multiple myeloma is if you have a patient that produces an aberrant antibody pool, you will see relatively normal or even high immunoglobulin levels. The trick is, though, that these patients will have elevated levels of a monoclonal protein, which are essentially dummy antibodies. These are not helpful in treatment of infections, and as such, we will not be able to ascertain how effective their immune system is just by using a quantitative level. In this situation, what I advocate for is looking into the different subclasses of IgG, IgG 1, 2, 3, and 4, as well as looking at vaccine responses. If a patient has not had pneumovax vaccination, dynamic antibody testing with a pre and post pneumovax titer, as well as titers to other vaccinations that are uh, inactivated or killed, such as tetanus or diphtheria, uh, would be helpful to figure out is this person responding appropriately to their vaccinations. Now the caveat to all this is that the patient must not have received IVIG or subcutaneous immunoglobulin previously, otherwise the donor IVIG or SCIG will have influence on the results that you do for the antibody titers.